I wish I could find every parent who will one day have a child come out to them. I'd look them in the eye, and this is what I'd say. When you least expect it, a battered child who's been lost at sea will show up on your doorstep. Now, this is your child, but it's a version of them you've never met. They're going to look haggard, long, tangled hair, skinny, ragged clothes, dirty feet. They look this way because they're worn out, exhausted from many years at sea. They've been alone in a lifeboat with no water, no map, and no paddle. Now, this is not your fault. You didn't even know they were in a battle. Next, welcome them inside, offer them a drink. After a few moments, they're going to swallow hard and tell you they've been on a journey. Know that by the time they get to you, they'll have mustered every last ounce of courage and buried lots of worry. In fact, getting to your doorstep might be the hardest part of their quest yet. Your next job is to listen to what they say and please believe them. Try not to downplay or explain away. When they tell you they were out on that sea for all those years, alone and scared, believe them. When they tell you they never asked to be on that boat, believe them. And when they tell you they tried to get off that boat many times and swim back to shore, for God's sake, believe them. If they feel like talking, ask them what it was like out on those seas. Ask them about the storms and swells. Ask them if they ever worried or yelled. Ask them if they ever felt scared as hell. But you must remember this child of yours is strong as well. Otherwise, they wouldn't even be here to tell you this tale. Ask them about sleeping alone under moon-toned skies. Ask them if God was there, if they felt him, if he dwelt with them, they might have, but you must remember that God feels very distant to people lost at sea. In fact, they might even be mad at God or think that he's a fraud. That's okay, there's no need to prod. Side note, theology lessons aren't helpful when their clothes are still wet with seawater. Next, ask them if they ever saw land in the distance. Ask them if they ever saw people on the horizon and if they ever screamed for help. Apologize for those who looked the other way or held up giant signs that would say, God hates the castaway. Tell them you're sorry they had to see that and how you would have ripped up those signs at the drop of a hat. Ask them if they ever put a message in a bottle hoping it might reach someone on land. Tell them you wish you'd found that bottle and held it in your hand. And then get a little bolder, put your hand on their shoulder, look them right in the eye and tell them you would have tried anything to find that message sooner. Tell them you would have drowned yourself if that meant getting to them. Tell them you wish we didn't live in a world where little girls and boys have bottles to hurl. Tell them that's unjust. Next, remind them that God loves his little lost sailors very much and that he never stopped loving them. Even on those nights with no moon and big shadows circling in black water below, remind them. Dear parent, whatever you do, please don't lecture them on your views. This is something they did not choose. Don't shame them for being on that boat. Don't berate or tell them God hates people in lifeboats. Tell them God loves those few souls in rafts just like he loves the rest on land. And remember that you aren't the survivor here. It's your child that has persevered. Please remember this. And finally, tell them they're no longer alone. Tell them that now they're fully known and they'll never be owned by that lifeboat again. Tell them they're on land now and land has homes and homes have love. And love is the thing that will bring, that will sing, that will cling. Love is the song that will calm. Love is the prayer that scares away dark shadows anywhere. And that as long as they are breathing, you will be their harbor. They will always have a home and they will never, ever be alone.